ChatGPT just released an AI-powered web browser called ChatGPT Atlas, and it's available right now. I've had about a day to play around with it, so I wanna show you a bunch of different ways you could use it and what it's capable of. And then at the end of it, I'll show you the agentic use, which only comes with the pro version of ChatGPT. Okay, so to access it, all you have to do is go to chatgpt.com slash atlas. It's available for download right now, but it is limited right now to Mac operating system. It is coming to Windows and Android a little bit later this year, but as I'm recording this, it's only available for Mac. Now I'll show you around here, but during the installation process, it's gonna ask you for a few different things. So I just wanna talk about those so you understand what kind of permission it needs here to run. Okay, so during the setup process, it's gonna ask you to import things from your Chrome or Safari, whichever one you're using here. Again, this is only available on the Mac right now. And this will bring your saved passwords, your bookmarks, and your browsing history over from one of these other browsers. And I've actually chose to do that. I started the import and it did bring in my browsing history and all that information. But you can't skip that if you don't want that information. Now, this is another thing that he asked me for. Turn on browser memory. Allow ChatGPT to remember useful details as you browse to give you smarter responses and proactive suggestions. You are in control. Memory stay private. Now here, I chose to turn this on, but with an AI powered browser, I could see why a lot of people may wanna skip this one. Obviously, if it does have more context about what you have searched in the past year, it can give you better suggestions, right? The AI could be better. It's always better with more context, but it's kind of a balance between privacy and if you want just a better user experience with the AI. So you have to decide that one, but it's nice that they let you skip right on the sign up process and you don't have to do this later in the settings. Now this one is really useful. I wasn't able to demo this one just yet, but I'll do it in the next video where you could highlight things, individual text for example, or individual paragraphs or headlines and actually ask ChatGPT with this pop-up to make changes for you right there. And then when you're done, it's gonna show you when you join Atlas and it's gonna show you how long you've been on ChatGPT and that's the whole setup process. Okay, every time you create a new tab, it will put you here on the homepage. So it's just a ChatGPT interface, but you're using it on the browser. I'm actually using my exact account. So it's gonna ask you to log into your account during the setup. So right here, you have your ChatGPT bar where you could type in any prompt. It also works as a place where you could type in a URL or just any type of search. So if I just search for ChatGPT and press enter, it will do a regular search. You also have access to all the different things you're used to inside of ChatGPT. So you could add photos and files. You could actually add different tabs here, which is only available on the browser. So if you wanted to pull in a specific tab into this chat, you can. They do have another option with a sidebar that I'm gonna mention that I think is far more useful. They have this agent mode that comes with the pro plan. I'm gonna show you this. This could actually take over your screen and click on things for you and maybe buy you some things. I'll show you this in a bit. Now you also have browser memory. Browser memory is interesting. If you give it permission during the setup, it could actually see what you have searched in your browser here. So it could pull in that information into the context of your conversation. So I know a lot of people are gonna have privacy issues with this one, but they do give you an option during the setup to not opt into this. Obviously, the more it knows about you, the more relevant the context, but you are giving away more of the privacy that way. Then you could create images. All these things are available here. And you also have tab search, so you could search from a specific tab here as well. And on the left side, you still have your different models here that you could choose from depending on your plan here. And if you click this right here, you still have all the things you have inside of ChatGPT. So you still have all your chat history, everything on your ChatGPT account, including custom GPTs, including projects, they're all gonna be available here on the browser version. Now, if you're using the free plan up on top, if you press your profile option and go to settings right over here, under data control, you could still make sure you turn off improved model for everyone if you don't want your information to be used to train ChatGPT models. By default, if you have a paid version, that is turned off. I can't even turn it on. But with a free plan, that is the place where you could turn off that option. Okay, now let me do a quick search here to show you how this all works. So as you do a search, you could see it has two different options when you do a search. You could use ChatGPT here, 
Or if you wanted to search Google, you could just search Google. That's a traditional search. This is the regular ChatGPT mode here that is gonna go ahead and search the web for you. But the results look a little bit different than when you're using the regular ChatGPT, right? It looks more like a search engine, but the answers are in a traditional ChatGPT response, but you have some images on top and you have some links right on top over here instead of just the links you see throughout your search. Then on top, you also could just click on search and this is what would happen if you chose the Google option. This is the result that you get. So typical Google search results. You also could go to the image tab. You could go to the video tab and you could go to the news tab. So they have those tabs available right on top every time you do any type of search. Now, the other thing you could do is you could actually just type in a URL. So if I just type in chatgpt.com, it will just take me to the regular ChatGPT website. So that works like any type of search bar on any browser and the top search bar works the exact same way. You could do the same way. And you could also press the plus sign here and you could add tools in this search bar too. So all these different options that I showed you that are available in the center are available in this search bar as well. Now you also have incognito mode. So if you don't want anything saved, but you still wanna use this browser, you could just click on this. It'll open a new incognito window. Now you still have ChatGPT right in the center here, but it won't save any of your information on the web. Now let me show you my favorite feature so far inside of ChatGPT Atlas. On any web page that you have open, you could click Ask ChatGPT and it opens up the sidebar here. But the most important part of this is that it actually has the context of this entire web page. So you could chat with it without having to copy and paste things from this web page or take screenshots from the web page. It has all that information. So for example, in one click, I could just press summarize and it'll summarize that web page for me. Now, something ChatGPT could easily do, but something like this, having this companion on every web page, it will save you a ton of time instead of switching tabs, going to ChatGPT or opening the app. Okay, the next thing is actually the context that it has in the entire browser. So not just your chat history or individual pages that it could see, but it could also see all the tabs that you have open here. Now this could become a lot more useful if you're the type of person that has a lot of tabs open. I typically have at least 10 tabs open. So for example, I could ask it to close any duplicate tabs here I have on top and it will just think through this, list the tabs and close any duplicate tabs. So there was just one and it just closed it. Now that's a really simple use case, but with tab control, you could actually do things like close things that are distracting or that are open for two weeks, right? You could just give it a prompt. Now, so far in my early testing, this did not work every single time. Sometimes when I asked it to do something with the tabs, it would just use a ChatGPT search, which is not what I was asking. And it would tell me it can't actually do anything with the tabs. So I'm sure they'll work out some of those issues right now, but that happened to me multiple times just in the first day. Now, comparing things between two different tabs is also really useful. So right here, I'm looking at the MacBook Air and I've been talking to chat about the MacBook Air here. Now I'm gonna ask it something more complicated. Compare this to the tab I had open earlier, which was this MacBook Pro tab, but I've had other tabs open throughout this video. So let's see if it could figure out what I'm asking for. I'm asking it to compare MacBook Air to the MacBook Pro. Okay, so in this case, it only remembered that I looked at this OpenAI model page as my last tab. So that's what it's trying to compare. So let me try again, this time, I'm gonna keep this one open and let's go ahead and click this and start a new chat here. So it starts from scratch and I'll go to the MacBook Pro. So now I just went from this one to this one. Now I'm gonna ask the same question. Let me start a new chat. Okay, and this time it also didn't know what tab I had open earlier. So it's asking me what tab I had open earlier. It made a guess and it's the right guess, but it did not exactly do what I had asked, so let me try again. Okay, so it looks like as long as the prompt has enough context, meaning I told it which two tab to compare, it did a good job comparing those two. Now, the one other thing I noticed with the user interface is you could actually stretch this out a little bit so you get more real estate. So if I want a table format, it will create a table format for me, typical things that I do inside of ChatGPT when I'm comparing a couple of different things. Now, a couple of other things I had an issue with that I'll point out, and then we'll look at the agent mode. And I have a video coming out with ton of different use cases, but I wanted to take more time making that video to show you real practical ones here. This was just a first look video, but I'm gonna go ahead and send this out to explain this page, right? 
And I'm not gonna edit this at all. I wouldn't editing the pauses. Look at the delay here, right? This is not at all how any other AI tool works, right? Gemini, ChatGPT, they don't have, what was that, five, six second delay before it even went to work. If I just took and paste this link into ChatGPT, okay, I'll do the exact same thing. Let me press enter here inside of ChatGPT, okay? So that took about two seconds. I think it was about half the length of the time. And it also spit out the text very, very fast. That one was working far slower. And I've used other AI powered browsers. I actually use the one from Perplexity called Comet all the time since it got released. So this to me, the speed is a huge problem, even though they said <laughs> this is gonna be just as fast as any other browser. So far when I'm using ChatGPT on the right side panel, which is the thing I would use most often probably, this is the use case that I would use most often, it was not quite anywhere near the speed that I was expecting. Okay, let me show you the agentic use, which by the way, only comes in the $200 a month plan. And I've covered it multiple different times. It's been around a while, now it's inside of the browser and I've never been impressed with it at all. But I'll show you what it can do. Okay, so if you click on agent mode, it can take over your screen and do things for you. And this is directly from their demo. So they said it could add things to cart for you. So let's just use that as an example. And the agent mode has two different ways to use it. You could use it as a logged in mode. So logged in means ChatGPT can access your logged in sites, making it faster to complete tasks. In this case, I'm not logged into Amazon, but I would need to be logged in in order for it to do that. So I could give it access to be logged into the site, or I could ask it to use the logged out version, which with adding things to cart is not gonna be very useful. So I'm gonna use the logged in version. So it's going to work. You could see if I'm watching it, it's actually trying to add things to cart. It did click add to cart. So, so far, so good. Now let me see if it could do the checkout. It has not logged me into Amazon, even though I shared my login information from Chrome when I set it up initially. But let's see if it could just log me in now or if it needs that information again from me. Okay, so you could see the mouse here. Okay, it took me to the sign in page. Let me see if it could auto sign in or it needs my credentials. Okay, so it was not able to auto sign in, but let me go ahead and sign in myself. Okay, so I just signed in, but it did not know to take back over for me. So I have to give it another prompt here that I've signed in. Now, I didn't tell it what kind of shipping details, so let's see what kind of shipping it decides to choose for us. It picked the default free option for shipping. It did not click place order though, which is good. Would you like me to place order now? So, this is the demo they used, and I just don't see any real reason anyone would use this right now. Unless it's connected to some other agent where it's doing things in the background and you're not clicking anything, giving a permission. So it's cool, the agents had this option since the very beginning they released it, and it could compare hotels for you. I'll come up with other use cases that I'll cover in the more deep dive video, but right now, I am not seeing any good reason to use the agent, except they had one thing in the demo that has not still quite worked out for me, so I need more time, where it could do things on Excel for you, for example. Okay, so far in my early testing, I think having this sidebar here, to have context of any web page, to have an AI companion that is the best ChatGPT model always following you around in any web page that you want is very handy. And it saves all that information to your regular ChatGPT account at ChatGPT.com, right? Now, opening a new tab and not having to go to ChatGPT.com and having this as your homepage also very interesting. But the couple of issues I had early on, speed was a big problem. I found it really slow. And the fact that it wouldn't follow my prompts sometimes when I'm trying to have tab control, because again, using a browser, what makes it really useful this way is it knows the context of tabs. The fact that it could also look into your memory, your browsing memory is interesting, but I think a lot of people might have privacy issues with that. So I'm not sure how many people are gonna turn that option on. Now, let me know in the comment what you think of it so far. And I'm also working on a very deep dive video so I could show you all the different things it could do because this was my first initial testing, but I wanna spend some more time with it to make you a very detailed video step-by-step -step on everything it could be done using ChatGPT Atlas. Thanks so much for watching this one. I'll see you next time.